By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a special episode for you because we have a zombie deck on the channel, the first ever zombie deck on the channel. I'm playing with green spiders and my opponent is playing with, I believe, a mono black zombie deck. And as you can see, his name is Zombie Master. So that's a pretty good start for me. A Lana Ralph's turn one with a Pendle Haven and an evil presence. This is actually a card that I think... Uh, doesn't see enough play because there's so many special lands in old school and an evil presence is an enchant land for and for one black mana it makes a land into a swamp so can you imagine uh, a deck with uh, four of these it's it's not nice so i'm playing a second forest there and attacking with my lana so i'm not ideal because i want to use that ramp mana to cast big spells and on the other side we see a mummy and the mummy is also officially a zombie and it's a two one card and when it dies, it's buried, so it doesn't go to the graveyard. It's removed from the game. Playing a second Lanowar Elf there, attacking, willing to trade. I mean, I don't need the mana, it seems. Um, but he's just letting it go. He's on 18. And Scape Zombies, the vanilla 2-2. Two -two. I mean, I'm, I'm really liking this deck. Pretty cool to see all these zombies here. And there's the Pandal Haven. And we were kind of like checking whether or not the swamp you know the land the panel haven turned into a swamp by the evil presence um is affected by the second panel haven since you have the legendary rule because it's a legendary land but we don't think so um if we made a mistake here please let me know in the comments below i'm curious i think this is the way to play it since it's now a basic swamp and no longer a legendary land so i'm attacking with two lana elves after casting my icy manipulator he's just letting it go because I can still pump them now, or I can pump them now with the Panel Haven. Because the Panel Haven with the countermarked is the one with the evil presence on it. So that's a basic swamp. And there's a zombie master. Nice. And that is a 2 2 zombie that gives all zombies swamp walk and regenerate for one black. So it's the weakest of all the lords. You have Lord of Atlantis and Goblin King, obviously, and it's the only lord that doesn't give a plus one, plus one uh, effect. And that's why it's regarded the, um, the weakest, and also because it gives regeneration, and most zombies already have regeneration. Now there's a second evil presence, and I'm playing a tracker, and the tracker is a really cool card. Um, at least I think it's a really cool card. It's a 2-2 creature, and you can tap 2 mana, 2 green, and tap the tracker, and then it deals damage equal to its power to target creature, and it also gets uh, receives damage from the creature. It deals damage to also equal to its power. So it's very flavorful. It's like you're finding the creature that you've been tracking, and then you fight with each other. Now, it's only a 2-2, but I'm playing with Giant Grove, so that means I can make it a 5-5, and then kind of use it as pretty solid removal, so that's one way that I can I can work with this. I'm also playing with the wolves from the Arabian Nights, so I can give it plus one, plus one. But there's an Oubliette. So an Oubliette is the card from an enchantment from the Arabian Nights, very popular in pauper format. And what it does, it kind of, it takes a creature and put, puts it in a dungeon. That's basically what it, what it does. So it's out of the game. And as you can see on the picture there, it's a rotting corpse rotting away there in, uh, in his jail cell. And obviously, this is very flavorful full for this uh, zombie deck. So there's a lot happening here. I'm playing another Lanaware Elf. I've taken four damage, by the way, in the process. Uh, putting a Giant Grove on one of my Elves. Just hitting him here for four. He's not going to block anyway. He's on 12 now. But those zombies are a problem because they are unblockable. Because of those um, evil presences creating those swamps on my side. And before combat, I'm tapping one of the zombies. And I'm blocking the Zombie Master, and with the mana from the Lanowar, giving it 4-4. So I'm killing the Zombie Master here, taking 2 damage from the Mummy. And <laughs> this is pretty cool. It's an enchant... Uh, I forgot the name here for a moment. I'm sure you know, but this is that enchant creature, enchant dead creature. And you can take a creature um, back from any graveyard. In this case, he's taking his Zombie Master back from the grave, and it's it's come alive again. Uh, very flavorful deck so far. Very cool uh, to play against. Um, he's on 12. I'm on 10. And I'm attacking with a single Lanowar Elf. And when you're playing against green, you're always like, okay, 
this is going to be a giant growth. On the other hand, he is on 12. Maybe he just needs to take the damage. Uh, we'll see what he does. And he takes the one damage, goes to 13. I think that's a good decision. You don't want to lose your zombie master. And I wish I still had that tracker now. And I have no... I have a tranquility in my deck. So I do have a way to get rid of those evil presences and oubliettes. But after sideboarding, I'm definitely going to add some tranquilities. Um, because of my Sylvan, I can look at the top three cards and pick one. And again, I'm attacking with my Lanor. And he's letting it go. It's going to 10. And I'm playing a Cockatrice. So the Cockatrice is the 2-4 creature that if it gets blocked, or if it blocks, then the creature it deals, the creature it basically blocks or is blocked by is, um, is dead. So it's destroyed. Here I'm activating my ice again before combat, taking the two damage from the mummy, going to six. And this is not great because I know, or I know, I, I believe my opponent plays with pestilence. So, uh, so it's not ideal. Maybe also drain life. I don't know. Playing a forest here. But how cool are these board states? I mean, I mean, look at that zombie deck. It's just fantastic. And so I have a flyer here in the form of a cockatrice, and that could be a serious problem for my opponent. I do not know of any flying zombie in old school. If they exist, leave a comment, let me know. I mean, that would be hilarious. And there is a strip mine. And I tap escape zombies pre-combat. And he attacks with the mummy. I mean, he's got me on four. But he's on, he's on 7, and if I have something like a pump spell, but I can only hurt him for 2 in the air. I'm really happy with my Sylvan right now that I can select the cards that I draw. Playing a factory, attacking with everything I have here. And I think he's kind of forced to use his Zombie Master. And this is a difficult decision because you don't want to use your zombie master. You can think, okay, you can only do deal four, I can let it go. On the other hand, if I have one single giant growth, it means it's exactly seven damage. And I think that's that's what happens here, or not. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, he blocks with his zombie master, so I, I play a giant growth on the Lanaware Elves. Uh, so that means my Lanaware lives and the zombie master dies. So he only takes three damage, he's on four right now. For a moment there, I thought he, he didn't block at all, and, and I won the game. But he decided to, and that was a good decision. So we're both on four, but I can tap one of his zombies. If I didn't have the Icy, he would have won right now. He's counting his mana. That's dangerous. Oh, cool. Lord of the Pit. Now, Lord of the Pit is a 7-7 seven, seven Trample Flyer. And uh, But you need to feed him something. You need to feed him a creature, I believe, during the upkeep. So I think Lord of the Pit is going to eat zombies. It's not the best menu, but he doesn't look like a guy that's very picky when it comes to what he eats. But this is so flavorful. Because I was, like I said before, I'm wondering what he does flying-wise. But he's playing a Lord of the Pit. That is extremely cool. And of course he knows that the uh, Icy is there, but... He didn't really have a choice with the Cockatrice. And then again, how cool. It's so cool to just cast the Lord of the Pit. So the mummy gets eaten by the Lord of the Pit. And the Lord of the Pit gets stabbed down. I mean, it's not going to do anything. And he can attack here with the Scap Zombies or not. And he can get me down to, uh, to two. But he's not, obviously, because he wants to, to have a blocker there. And I'm tapping his Scap Zombies now. And this seems to be end game. And it is, I'm winning game number one here. Oh, and look at that, the next draw would have been a pestilence. That means we would have had a draw here at, at least. So this was game one, very exciting. We're going to sideboard and I'll see you back here for game number two. Game number two, and I wonder if my edit tranquilities will help me out here. I've actually added two, so I'm playing with three now, main. Uh, I believe that the Zombie Master has boarded in some terrors. So I think he told me. 
It's a very nice guy, the zombie master, and I'm hoping to see some Walking Dead because we've never had the card Walking Dead on the channel before, so that would be funny. Uh, there's a swamp here, of course, the zombie master gets to start after losing that first game. And there I'm playing a scavenger folk. Actually, it kind of fits the theme of horror here. The scavenger folk, such a cool card. And there's the mummy again. The 2-1 Savannah line of black, but just not as good as the Savannah lines. And ooh, I'm not I'm not finding a land here. Playing its second scavenger folk. He's playing a second mummy. And there I have my second forest. We're both kind of stuck on land a little bit, but there is my Sylvan Library, so that will probably solve the problem. And I haven't seen that many artifacts, so I don't think that my scavenger folks will be that handy. And there it is, the Walking Dead. Yes, that's so cool. 1-1, one, one, and it already has regeneration. One more reason why the Zombie Master is considered so mediocre, because it gives creatures uh, regeneration that usually already have regeneration because a lot of zombies even in old school already have regeneration and I'm playing a pendle haven here drawing an extra card that's why I'm going to 16 and I'm playing the tracker again so hopefully I can use okay I cannot use it another terror I don't I like the tracker so much as a card and it would just be so nice to activate it once just once hasn't happened yet so there is the terror and it's my turn again and I feel I'm kind of Picking it up now, the Zombie Master is not drawing any land, and I have that extra cards, and I have that kind of card selection engine with Sylvan Library. And the Walking Dead is attacking, and I, of course, have my Pendlehaven to pump my creature there, making it a 2-3, blocking, and he's regenerating the Walking Dead. So my Scavenger Folk and Walking Dead both survive. I mean, this kind of, I just have this funny idea that he's walking into... That's very scary forest where the scavenger folks live. Scavenger forest, and there's this undead zombie. I don't think he's, he's going to be even impressed with scavenger folk. He's like, yeah, that's just another day at the office. So let's look here. Oh, an ashes to ashes. What a brutal card. And it removes both of my scavengers here. And that means it's an open field now. And it does mean that my opponent has to take five damage. But the zombie master is attacking me now with a zombie army. And I'm down to 11 all of a sudden because I've already taken... Lost for life because of that Sylvan Library activation earlier in the game. And now I'm playing a single cockatrice. So that's not too bad, but it's not great because I just want to have a lot of blockers. And if he has a terror now, I mean, it's bye-bye cockatrice. And it's bye-bye cockatrice. There's a terror there. Attacking, I'm on six life all of a sudden. And it can't go very quick. So he, I, I thought I was really winning this uh, game. But I'm not. And playing another scavenger, scavenger folk number three. I should really learn to shuffle here. Three scavenger folks. Uh, at least I got the panel haven to pump it up, but it's only blocking one. And I'm on six. It's not great. I wonder if my opponent is playing any uh, bad moons. Bad moon, another card that I kind of find underplayed because it's a black and a generic and it gives everything plus one, plus one where you see that a card like Crusade is far more popular. And there's a tap for three, and there's a Zombie Master. That means that all his creatures now have Regeneration and Swamp Walk. So all he has to do right now is finding a way to uh, give me a Swamp. And I'm blocking here, and it means he loses one of his mummies, but he deals three damage to me. He's down to three. And if you just can play one evil... Well, actually, he doesn't need an evil presence anymore. I need to play a blocker here. I got my Sylvan, so I'm searching for it. I can no longer draw an extra card or else I'm dead. And I'm attacking him. <laughs> Probably, yeah. And I'm giant, Two giant growths? Three giant growths? If I have a fourth giant growth here, I can win this game, actually. But no, I don't. I don't. And that seems to be end game here. So I did one final attack kind of to end this game in style here and this is the end I had a mirror universe that could have helped but I couldn't cast it so that is game and that means we're going to the third and decisive game so it's very exciting looking forward to see what's going to happen so let's check out game number three game number three the decisive game I'm on the draw green spiders versus the zombies 
So let's see if I can beat the zombie master. Not sure if I want to because his deck is so cool. And I haven't played a single giant spider yet. So my goal for this third game is to activate my trigger and play a giant spider. Oh, and I think he's showing some sideboard cards now. And obviously the card I think is called the death grip. The enchantment there that you saw, that's a big problem because for two green or for two black mana he can counter any green spell. So here we go. Taken seven. I believe it's called Death. I'm not sure now. Uh, maybe let me know in the comments below. And anyway, let's go and, and, and let's have a look at the game. There's green mana there. Lana or else, turn one. Perfect start for me. And my opponent only has a swamp. And a turn two even. There is a wolf. And the wolf you can tap and he gives a creature plus one plus one. It can also give, give himself plus one plus one. But there's some action there from the zombie master playing a soul ring and then uh, playing escape zombies. And even soul ring kind of gets another meaning uh, when you play against this zombie deck. It's interesting. Maybe he should also play with soul net. That would be cool as well. Anyway, I'm playing as um, scavenger folk. And look at that card that the Zombie Master is casting. And we're just going to pause the video here right now because this is a card you don't see that often. It is a Gabal Ghoul. And I've never played against this card. I know this card. Uh, I think it's beautiful. The art is beautiful. A Gabal Ghoul is a card from the Arabian Nights expansion. It's a 1-1. One, one. It's for 2 and, and 1 black. And it reads, at the end of each turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Cabal Ghoul for each other creature that died during the turn and was not regenerated. In other word, words, it will probably get really big really fast. Uh, but that's not the reason why I've paused this video. I just want you to kind of look at this card because it's just it's such a stunning card. You don't see it every day. Okay, let's uh, jump right back to the uh, game, game number 3, and uh, see if this Cabal Ghoul can, uh, can deal some damage. And we are back to the game. And sorry for the interruption, but you just don't see cards like that every day, let alone play against them. Uh, so here we go. Still doing pretty well. I have the Maze of If, of course. So if the ghoul really grows uh, to a size that matters, I can just use my uh, Maze. On the other hand, my opponent is playing with, I believe, four evil presents. Sacking here my Scavenger Folk for the Soul Ring. So I finally get to use the Scavenger Folk. Uh, I, having some mana problems, it seems. Not finding that third land here. Stuck on stuck on two land. Of course, I have the Lana War, but I also have that Maze of If that doesn't give any land. Oh, and this is interesting. The first counter on the Cabal Ghoul. So that's nice. That's actually a pretty cool interaction. If you have a green and a black deck, maybe you can play Cabal Ghoul and Scavenger Folk. Not too shabby. But, um, okay, I'm not attacking, not doing anything. And there's a Walking Dead. A signed Walking Dead. Very cool. And he's slowly growing his zombie army. And we're both having some mana problems here. And there it is. The Death Grip. And that is a big problem. I will have to find a way to remove it and do it right now before I can activate it. Because for two black. And there it is. A Tranquility. So that's great. So that enchantment is gone because that that would have been a, uh, a huge problem for me with this enchantment being able to counter every green spell for just two black mana and he has two black mana. But we're kind of in a standstill here. Me with that mace. Although he now has two 2-2 two, two creatures to attack and a regeneration creature. So chooses to play another walking dead and not yet going into his big attack and I'm tapping three now and I'm playing the tracker again so will I finally succeed in activating that no there's a terror because the combo there was on the board between the wolf and the tracker now how it works is I use the wolf to pump my tracker to three three and then I activate my tracker to kill one of his creatures for instance the scape zombies which is two two so that means three damage to the scape zombies and Two damage back to the tracker, but the tracker is now a 3-3 creature because of the wolf. So that's kind of the combo here, but okay. There, again, I mean, you cannot have everything in life. And again, and again nice synergy with the Cabal Ghoul, because the Cabal Ghoul is going to 3-3 now, thanks to that terror. 
because my tracker goes to the graveyard. But I've played an icy manipulator, so that's another weapon against the Cabal Ghoul, and just a very annoying card to play against. And my opponent is attacking now with escape zombies. I am sending it back. And untapping, taking my turn. We're both on 20 still, so this is a pretty slow match compared with, uh, with the other two matches. Playing a Cockatrice here, and I know that my uh, the Zombie Master has problems with flying creatures. I mean, he's not close to the Lord of the Pit. He's played out at least one terror, and there is an evil presence. And all he needs now is a Zombie Master. And that means my, my Maze of If, that's why I'm putting a counter on there. My Maze of If is turning into a basic swamp. And those evil presences, I'm just going to say it again. I think they're underplayed. I think they're much better than a lot of people think. And playing a second Icy Manipulator here. And all of a sudden, I have a lot of land here. Attacking with the Cockatrice through the air. So he's on 18, finally dealing some damage there. And this is a problem I feel for the Zombie Master because he's facing two Icy Manipulators now. And one is annoying, but two is super annoying. Playing another Walking Dead. And I just tap down his creatures there as Cabal Ghoul and Escape Zombies prior to his combat phase. And drawing a card here. Attacking with the Cockatrice. He goes down to 16. And just passing turn. And all I wanted to say, is that a zombie master? But no, it's escape zombies. He really needs a zombie master now to give his creature swamp walk and to kind of deal some damage. Because I'm now hitting him through the air. Although it's only two damage with the cockatrice. I mean, can you imagine the cockatrice being a 4-4 flyer? Then it would be one of the most um, most used creatures, I believe, in, in old school perhaps, with that extra ability. So using my IC tapping... His ghoul and escape zombies. And now there is a pestilence on the field. Ooh, this is very interesting. Also with the Cabal Ghoul interaction. And he has those regeneration creatures as well. So he can just regenerate his creatures. I pretty much know now that my uh, wolf and my uh, Lanor Elves are going to die. So that's why I'm just deciding to attack with everything. And he cannot regenerate his Walking Dead right now because he's completely tapped out. And I'm I'm keeping one Icy there back because I want to definitely be able to tap that uh, Ghoul. And here you see me playing a Giant Grove thinking I want to save my Wolf, but I'm not doing that. I'm actually using my Giant Grove for damage, realizing that next turn... Um, my wolf is going to die anyway because he's going to activate Pestilence. The nice thing now is that he's on 8 and I'm on 20. And with Pestilence, you also deal damage to yourself. Um, so it's, it's going to be harder for the Zombie Master to activate his Pestilence because he will get just too much damage, deal too much damage to himself. And it's nice to see that uh, Cabal Ghoul, they're growing. Unfortunately, I'm tapping it down. I, I kind of feel like I'm messing up the party here because such a beautiful card deserves to... To deal some damage but it's just too dangerous for me now i'm on 14 and yeah so he's dealing one damage there with the pestilence using the other two black mana to regenerate his walking dead i mean that's just the best play um, but of course i still have the cockatrice so he's probably going down to to five now and who knows maybe i can find another giant growth there it is, he's going to 5. There's a Giant Grove, he's going to 2 life. So that means he only has 1 turn. And there it is, a Giant Spider. Yes, so I've, I've cast a Spider. That's a good feeling. So I've succeeded. Didn't activate my Tracker. That's not great. So I guess I have to play some more games with my green deck to get a Tracker activation here. And he's asking what's in my graveyard. And that's probably because he has the anime debt. So now I remember the name, the anime debt. And it's not ideal against my deck. Well, I mean, if there would have been a cockatrice in there, it would have been great, actually. But there's not a cockatrice in there. And I'm tapping his ghoul and escape zombies down. He's on two. There's not much he can do. He can kill himself with the pestilence. And I kind of feel that 
if he would have drawn his um is dealing two damage with his walking dead if he would have drawn his zombie master it would have been a different game because i have the swamp and they would have been unblockable but that's not the case and attacking here with the cockatrice and the giant spider and that seems to be end game and it looks like we're discussing a few things here talking about the ghoul <laughs> <laughs> making that into a necklace of counters uh, but that's it that's the game so um, I've won this one very close two to one but what a beautiful deck and how cool uh, to play against that Gabo ghoul and zombie master and escape zombies and walking deads beautiful thank you zombie master for the game looking forward to play against you uh, in the future for now thank you for watching this episode of Timmy talks if you'd like to see more games click on the links that are appearing right now or check out the channel Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't done that yet. It's very much appreciated. For now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time.